tonight, the legendary Sandy Mack. Um, and Sandy has quite a, a resume. Um, she was the first um, woman president of the American Society of Dowsers, and she was actually unanimously voted in, which is another kind of amazing thing. She's been dowsing since the 70s, and um, she's a big proponent and a believer in um, dowsing. So she uses it in um, her, she has an incredible healing practice, which I've benefited from. I think most of us um, have benefited from. Um, and uh, let me just, some of the things that Sandy does. She um, has an incredible list of skills. She does neuro linguistic programming. She knows all about Bach flower remedies, shamanism. Um, and we already talked about dowsing. She's traveled around the world to um, learn about multiple healing modalities in places like Peru and China, Tibet, Greece, Egypt, and even Africa. And she's just a lifelong learner. She's always been willing to study and learn as long as she could because she has an innate desire. Just she is driven to help others and end suffering. So um, she's combined like 70 different healing modalities. She does emotion code and body code taught by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Um, you know, she has a very comprehensive bag of tools that she uses to really help other people. And um, she believes in infinite possibilities like I do. I call myself a possibilitarian and I know Sandy is. So um, anyway, I guess without further ado, um, Sandy is going to be talking about dowsing for abundance tonight. So welcome, Sandy. I cannot hear anybody. <laughs> I think Sandy's muted. Okay, can we un there? How's that? Okay, that's better. Welcome, Sandy. This is Connie Silva. Good, welcome, Connie. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you. I want to welcome everybody. I guess I'm going now. Is that right? Yes. Mary? Um, okay, yeah. great. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank these um, technological geniuses. I want to thank Mary Wilson, who's kind of your hostess tonight, and Emily Sloan, who's the genius behind all the technology and also um, contact and communication person for the Lone Star Dowsers, and Catherine Ashby, who has had the post for years, and Carol Money, my local promoter in Houston that certainly has helped a lot of people and sent this information out to everyone. And of course, I want to thank everyone attending and all of the dowsers and all of the ones who are not yet dowsers, but you plan to be in the future. Because if you listen to this little lecture and you get a little bit of a hint of what dowsing can do for you in your life and how many ways you can use it, it really is infinite possibilities. So if you haven't already learned, then plan on learning as soon as you can because I really do love dowsers. I've been dowsing for many, many years, and um, I've got a lot of other skills and abilities that I've been trained in, and the one thing that ties everything together is working with a pendulum or working with a dowsing tool. So I continue to be inspired by that, and I would just love everyone to be able to have uh, a pendulum in their pocket, and to know how to use it, especially in these exciting times that we're in now, because um, if you are a good dowser, you'll never be a slave. You won't be misled, you won't be lied to, you won't be betrayed, you won't be tricked, because you'll be able to access direct energy from creator, from source, and be able to make a lot of distinction between what you're hearing on TV, what you're uh, being told, all the different programs that are going on. So by all means, as well as any time historically, dowsing is a really important skill. 
So um, what we're going to talk about this evening is dowsing for abundance. And this is actually a two-day class. Um, so I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but I'm going to do the best I can for all of you to be able to get the basic information from this. So what I'd like to invite you to do, first of all, is to get, um, if you don't already have it in front of you, get a pen and paper and plan on taking some notes. And um, because some people write every little tiny word out, I want to invite you because we're going to be moving fast to just abbreviate. So if I say past life, don't write out P-A-S-T-L, just put P-L, that means past life, okay? So I want you to be able to get all the information you can as thoroughly as you can and not look back later and go, what in the world was I writing? You know, was I crazy or something like that? But I do want you to take notes because you're not gonna be able to remember everything. I'm giving you the highlights from what is essentially a two-day intensive class. And um, so that's why I want you to take notes. So um, what the one of the first things I want you to know is that this is kind of oriented toward financial abundance, but you can use it for anything. I taught this class a couple years ago in Prescott, Arizona, and there was somebody in the class that said, well, we've got plenty of money, but what we need is an abundance of fun. We've been working hard our whole life, and what we need is more fun and relaxation and interesting things to do. So whatever your area of interest is that you want more abundance in, you can take these principles and use that or apply that in that particular way. So I wanted you to know it's not just limited to getting extra money in case you already have a bunch. You don't know what to do with it. Okay. Um, so one of the first things I want you to do, and I'll just give you a minute or so to think about this, and maybe you've already thought about it, is what do you think that your blocks are to abundance, financial abundance or abundance of whatever it is you're considering? What do you think your blocks are? You think you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, somebody put a curse on you, um, the universe is against you, you don't deserve it. Uh, whatever it is, just even if it's just totally crazy, just begin to think of whatever you consider that there might be a block or a limitation to your ability to manifest or generate what it is that you want to have in your life. Okay, so just take a moment and jot that down. A little phrase or two will be fine. Because it might be true and it might be a complete lie, but if it's coming into your mind, then it's worth writing down. Okay? Now, what patterns have you noticed in terms of your own life? You have probably worked at different kinds of jobs. You've had different kinds of uh, ways that you've spent your money. Um, maybe you make a whole lot, then you spend it all, or maybe you just try to keep ahead of your debt. Or maybe you earn a lot, but you can't save a lot. Or maybe it's any number of things. So I want you to just think about what your patterns are that you've noticed in your own life that has to do with your abundance. What patterns have you noticed? And just jot that down. And then I want you to think about what did your parents or primary caretakers do or what did they deal with in terms of money? Did they have plenty? Did they have beliefs around it? Like you got to save everything and you can't spend it or money's to spend, not to save, or uh, maybe had some religious overtones like, um, uh, well, if you have a lot of money, then you're probably doing bad things or you can't get to heaven through the eye of a camel if you make too much money or whatever that saying was. Or rich people are all liars or they, uh, they get their money through ill-begotten means or you can't be spiritual. That's one of the things a lot of us have interest with. You can't be spiritual and still make or have uh, a lot of money or even a decent living. You know, if you're poor, you're humble. I just never could understand how if you were really poor, or struggling, that helped anybody. I don't know, it helped other people, I don't know, it helped your family, I don't know, it helped you, I sure don't think it helped God very much. 
So think about what those kind of beliefs were or patterns that your family had, whether they had money or they struggled with money. For example, as you're writing this down, I'll just tell you a couple things about me. My family was in a family owned business and um, we would have certain seasons of the year where we would make a lot of money, but then that money would have to last for the rest of the year. So we would have several months of the year where we weren't generating any money, but we would have to have saved enough to make it last for a long time. And I've noticed that I tend to have some of those same patterns. Well, maybe I'll travel to Houston or Florida or Colorado or somewhere else and work really hard for a few weeks and make you know, a good amount of money, but then I'll come back home here in Northern Arizona and I don't have necessarily a lot of business here except online. Uh, I'm not able to teach classes at the level that I do in these other places because this is a pretty poor community and um, people uh, don't necessarily have discretionary income to be able to pay what they do at say the villages in Florida or some of the other places. So I'll have kind of a feast or famine pattern that I, that I can look back and say, you know, some of this became uh, apparent when I started looking at the patterns of my family. So take a look at those things. What did your parents or family deal with in terms of money or struggles with money? And then just jot that down. Jot a couple phrases or a couple sentences or something down about that. And see what comes up. Then, I hope I'm not going too fast, but we've got so much to cover. Then I want you to consider what your own personal beliefs are about wealth, money, abundance, prosperity, um, those kinds of things. There may easily be some uh, religious overtones. Even though you think you've um, overcome that, there may be some overtones with that. There may be some cultural things. There may be some things like, well, you have to work hard to get any money. Or the only way that honest money comes is if you work really hard versus working smart. Or people that have a lot of money got it through cheating other people or ill-begotten means or something like that. What are your own personal beliefs? And remember what a belief is. A belief is something that we act as if it were true. It's not necessarily true. If it's true, it's for every living person on this planet. Like you need air to breathe. That's not a belief, that's a fact. But if something else is something that you act as if it were true, but it's not true for everybody else, then it's just a belief. And beliefs can be changed. That's one of the things that we can do is actually change our beliefs about money. And the beliefs can include things like, I don't have permission to do that, or I can't do better than my parents, or I don't deserve to have more, or I'm not good enough, or other people can do it, but I can't do it, or there's a curse or something in my family that's getting me, or any number of things. Those are all beliefs. So if you, even have a thought of any of that coming into your head now. Jot that down, the belief. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the things that Emily and Mary have done is make available a handout um, about that's titled Manifestation. Now, Mary is showing that to you and Emily is going to make it available miraculously for you to download this or to um, uh, have it sent to you or whatever. Mary? It was sent out with the Zoom link, so everybody has access to it. But um, she also put it in the chat. So if you want to download it from the chat tonight, you are welcome to do that. It's there as well. Okay, great. So this is one of the handouts that we use in the class. And I'm going to read this to you. And I don't want you to necessarily fill it in right now. Actually, what I would like you to do is make two or three copies, because some of this is going to be changing at a certain point. 
but you can jot it down if you want now. And the, and the statement is because when you write something down, physically writing it down, not just on a computer, you are taking it from the unmanifest or spirit level to the physical manifest three-dimensional reality level. So the act of actually writing something down, I think even by writing it more than just typing it in on a computer, makes it more real, makes it more active, and actually starts to manifest it in physical form. Sandy, um, I want to jump in. It might be kind of fun for you to douse for the group to see what percentage as a group we resonate with abundance. Okay. Yeah, let, let's do that after we write this down. That's a good point. Okay, so the statement is on your manifestation paper is, I am gratefully manifesting and easily receiving. So that doesn't mean you have to sweat and, and groan and moan and, you know, whatever. And then it'll have a place to put a number amount. You could say $1,000 a week or $200 a week or something. And it could be a week, a month, a year. So you'll see the place there where you can write that in. Now, let me tell you, before you start filling this out, don't do something that is unbelievable to you and your subconscious. Don't say, I want to make a million dollars a day um, sitting on the couch and eating tacos. That's not going to cut it. This needs to be something that you believe or reasonably believe is possible for you to create and manifest. And then also you need to put in things into action. So, um, if a visualization or something without some action is just a hallucination actually. So I gratefully am manifesting and easily receiving X amount this year, month or other time frame while working so many hours per week or day doing, put in some type of work that you it could be consulting. It could be dowsing. It could be, um, any number of different things that you're doing and you could do more one things, but it's the form of work, which I love while maintaining excellent health and energy, having plenty of time for pastimes I enjoy such as maybe you like to learn new things. Maybe you like to go eat Greek food. Maybe you want to go skiing every winter for a week or two, could be anything, but put some other things in there. And while also nurturing healthy, loving relationships and keeping all areas of my life balanced and happy. And then you sign that, okay? So make sure you download more than one copy because I guarantee you this probably will be changing, but you can have this as a good worksheet for right now. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a minute to just fill that out. So raise your expectations a little bit, but don't make it so impossible that it's just, you know, something totally foolish or silly. One of the things that we talk about sometimes is what they used to call um, a person's glass ceiling, which would be how much did they believe that they could make a year? Maybe you only believe you could make 50,000 a year or 100,000 or 500,000 a year. And sometimes you might douse that your glass ceiling is only a certain amount. And there are ways dowsing and with some of the tools that we have to be able to raise that glass ceiling. You're not going to raise it to $10 million, but maybe you could raise it another 20 or 30,000 a year that you're making. Okay. So I hope everybody's got that. You got that, Mary? Yeah. Okay, great. So write that out, your goal statement. That's in the manifestation handout. Now, I want you to douse and ask what percentage of your energy, we're going to do it two different ways. We're going to do it with your conscious mind and we're going to do it with your subconscious mind or your unconscious mind. What percentage of your energy is in alignment with 
abundance. And you can douse that. If you don't know how to work with the pendulum, use your body, use that sway technique. Or some, maybe you can, might even just have to guess. What's our question again? What percentage of my conscious energy is in alignment with abundance? And with this goal statement, yeah. And then what percentage of my energy, of my subconscious or unconscious, is in alignment with this goal statement or manifestation paper or abundance? Got it? Everybody got a number, I hope? Yes. Okay. Hope y'all are writing this down. Okay, I'm going to douse as a whole for everybody that's on the call at this time. What percentage of your energies as a whole at a conscious level is in alignment with abundance? This is just the group as a whole. And I'm just going to count up here. Five. 10, I'm gonna specify financial abundance because I think that's what a lot of people are working on. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So it's between 45 and 50%, 45, 46, about 47% is what I'm getting, that people, at the conscious level are in alignment with abundance, financial abundance. Okay, now I'm gonna douse for the group as a whole that are on the call at this time, what percentage of your subconscious is in alignment with, is in alignment with um, this uh, manifestation statement and with abundance? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. Well, isn't that interesting? With this, then your contract, what did I say? 65, 70, 65, 66, 67% of your subconscious is in alignment with that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay. Now, Write these, write these numbers down that you've got for your own self. Now, ask about what percentage of your energy is in alignment with lack. Your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. What percentage is in alignment with lack? There's not enough. Not enough to go around. If I take my share... Somebody else is going to do without. Oh my God, the people down the street are going to starve to death because I made some decent money this week. What percentage is in lack? L A C K. Just jot that down. Do it for your conscious mind and do it for your subconscious mind. Great. Now, douse to see what percentage of my energy is in alignment with stagnant. Stagnant, like an old pond with green stuff growing in there. Stagnant, like stuck. As well? Is it, is it what? Is it um, for our conscious and subconscious? As conscious well? and subconscious, yes. What's stagnant or stuck? It's just sitting there. The water's not moving, it's not flowing, the river's not moving, it's just sort of stuck. And not, it's not that there's a lack, it's just that it's just stuck or stagnant. Do it for your conscious mind and do it for your subconscious mind. We're getting these figures so that you'll have a baseline of where your energy is at. And then at some point you're gonna douse do you need to raise your abundance or do you need to decrease your lack or stagnant? 
there are a couple ways of doing that. Okay, I hope everybody's got that. If you got any questions, just um, write, text them in there or chat them in or however Emily and Mary have got this set up for you to do. And we'll get to them because we're gonna leave a little place for questions and answers later. Now, I'm gonna go over some of the areas that I found that people have blocks to their abundance. So there's all kinds of different things. It's amazing what people could be believing or having going on that could be a block. So this is just a yes or no. Ask if there's any oaths, vows, covenants, contracts, or other things like that are blocking you from your financial abundance or from being able to increase your wealth. For example, some of these are from past life. Maybe you were a nun or a priest in another lifetime. And you took an oath of, what is it? Poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay, you would never take money. Okay, so if so, just make, just make a note of that. Yes, there is something there. There's an oath or one or more oaths. Maybe you did one in this life. Maybe you had another life where you had a lot of money and you misused it and you realized that on your deathbed and said, I never want to be rich again. I never want to have a lot of money. It just causes too much heartache and pain. You don't need to know what the specifics are, but just dows if there's any oaths, vows, um, covenants, contracts, or other things from another life that are limiting you. Now, the next thing I want you to douse on, if there's any inherited patterns from your ancestors, some of you who've done like emotion code work or body code work with me or other people know what I'm talking about. If not, you're just going to have to trust me that we inherit not only things like blue eyes and brown eyes, but we inherit things like beliefs and values, and we inherit patterns from our ancestors. Could be five, six, seven, ten generations ago. Just like when you think about the Hatfields and the McCoys, you know, we don't like those people, we're never gonna like them, we never have liked them, and we're never gonna like them in the future. That's just like an inherited pattern that keeps going on, on and on and on. So check and see if there's anything from ancestors. And if so, how many there are, and who they were, and where they were. We can talk about how to change these things later. But just yes or no, if there's any inherited patterns from ancestors that need to be cleared. Okay, the next thing I want you to douse on, just a yes or no, and maybe you'll get more specifics, any core beliefs that you have now. I mentioned a couple of these, like you can't be spiritual and still be wealthy. You have to work really hard to get any money. If you have a lot of money, other people will be jealous. Uh, in a lot of cultures and families, uh, it was considered to be very disrespectful to make more money than your parents. That means that you thought you were showing them up or you were doing better than them or you thought you were pretty hot stuff. My parents actually encouraged me to do better than they did. And, you know, they even said, you could be president if you want, but in these days and ages, I would certainly not want to be the president. <laughs> I had enough challenges being president of American Society of Dowsers. Um, so identify if you've got any core beliefs. I guarantee you probably have some. And then if you can jot those down, if you can come up with any, that would be great. And then imagine what the new life, new belief would be. So if you have, well, I don't deserve to make more than 50 or 100,000 a year. That could be flipped. A belief can be changed in literally less than 10 minutes. Literally less than 10 minutes. And remember, a belief is something that you act as if it were true. And if it's not true for everybody else on the planet, it's just your belief and it can be changed. 
So it could be like, hey, I'm a, I'm a, an aspect of the divine, or I'm a beloved child of God, and I deserve to manifest and create any amount that I want. I deserve it. It's just my divine right. What an outrageous thought if you always believe that, you know, you didn't deserve it. Okay, the next thing I want you to douse is if there's any interference from any like discarnate entities, any dark forces, anything like that. So what did you call it? Interference from? Entities, which are dead spirits that haven't made it across into the light or any other kind of dark interference. There could be, you know, things like, whether you believe in it or not, things like extraterrestrials, demonic interference, curses, um, uh, dark past life stuff that you could, maybe somebody talked to you into something in another lifetime and you've still got residual kind of karmic stuff hanging out from that. Um, any kind of interference that's coming in from, you know, uh, it doesn't happen so much in this country, but in some countries there's curses. Certainly uh, things like in Mexico, they would bring in uh, brujos or brujas or uh, curanderos that were working on the dark side. And people could go and pay literally to have a curse on them that they wouldn't make money or they would lose their husband or they would have ill health or something like that. Um, so just douse and see yes or no if there's any kind of interference coming in from that kind of stuff. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, you have to be open to all these different things because if you could have figured this out by now, you would have already figured it out. Unless you're just lazy <laughs> or you don't feel like you deserve it. Maybe we need to douse for that too. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. Okay, now I want you to douse um, if there's any allergies. If your body has any allergies to anything that relates to money or abundance. For example, your body might have an allergy to gold. And I found out that a very high percentage, like 80 or 90% of the people walking around have an allergy to gold. Now, why would that be? significant. Anybody have any ideas? Because money is based on gold. <laughs> yes, and why would that be bad? I mean, why would the why would your body have an allergy to gold? Okay, you may remember some stories where they talked about um, some of the early races that were created perhaps by the Anunnaki or some of the creator beings. And that they were, they created human beings a long time ago on this planet to mine for gold for the gods. Well, if you were a slave or a slave race, or you a million years ago had energy uh, carried from that time that you were a slave, that all your purpose, your only purpose in being created was to mine gold for the gods, then there's a part of you that said, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Keep that stuff away from me. So if you'll remind me, Mary, later before we end, I will clear everybody's allergy to gold, which will be great. But you're going to find that this is very common. And surprisingly, some of the only people, now some of you have already cleared because we've done it a couple of times before. But surprisingly, some of the people that don't have allergies to gold are very wealthy Jewish people. Isn't that interesting? Their bodies do not have an allergy to gold. I don't know if it's a racial thing, a cultural thing, a religious thing. I don't know what it is, but I found not 100%, but pretty much a pattern after working with this thing for, oh, probably 10, 15 years I've worked with this thing. So you might have your body, not you, your body might have an allergy to cash, an allergy to saving money, an allergy to deserving money, an allergy to um, earning money, an allergy to uh, gold or silver or cash, uh, an allergy to any one of these things around there. So check and see if there's anything like that. First, if your body has any allergies to them, and then you can possibly identify what that allergy might be. If you can't identify it now, just jot it down. Maybe you can work on that later. 
Okay, now I want you to douse if there's any other past life or karmic patterns that relate to money. And that could be anything. Maybe you've had a lot of past lives where you were very impoverished or money was taken away from you. Maybe you have past life where you had a lot of money and you weren't very happy and you decided, I don't want to have any this happening again to me anymore. Maybe you had past life where there was a misuse of money or abundance. You know, maybe you're a very wealthy person back in Rome or Egypt and you were really abusive to your slaves and people starved under you and they didn't, uh, you had no compassion. You had no empathy. But see if there's any past life or karmic patterns. You don't need to know what they are right now. Just if, there, if that's an interfering energy or an interfering block to your ability to manifest and create what you want. This is very common and it's an overlaying, um, overlaying uh, shadow or an overlaying pattern that affects a lot of people now. Another one is that they couldn't be trusted with money. That's a belief that a lot of people have too, or even an allergy that they can't be trusted with money. Yeah, I found that in myself oh, a year or so ago and I changed it and changed the belief that I could be trusted with large amounts of wealth and abundance. I'm not gonna just go down to Neiman's and blow it all or something like that. Not that I ever thought I would, but somehow my subconscious got, you necessarily can't be trusted with that. Okay, now, hopefully everybody's got that. I want you to douse if, if there's any trapped or underlying emotions that may be affecting your ability to manifest what you want. Any trapped or underlying emotions and they can be from this life, past life. They could be preconception, even before you were conceived. They could be something that you picked up pre-birth, in utero. Maybe um, your parents got pregnant and it was unexpected. And your father had just lost his job and he was freaking out. He's like, oh my God, we can't afford to be having a baby now. We can't even afford to pay our rent. And so he had a lot of, uh, a lot of fears and frightening things that were going on about money. We can't afford it. It's not okay. Maybe we shouldn't have this baby or whatever. And so if your parents had some stuff that were going on pre-birth in utero, then those are patterns that could be affecting you from either your mother or your father. Okay. And even from past lives, preconception, prenatal, inherited, or past lives. And I talked about before some inherited ones. There could be inherited emotions from patterns. And even if you were adopted and you don't know who your pattern parents were, it doesn't matter. These things can still very much affect us. Even if you were a sperm donor baby, and I doubt that any of you were, then you're still carrying patterns from that family, that family system. Okay, now I want you to douse and see if there's any images or resonances that need to be cleared. Resonance are something like, a, like an emotion, except they're like, if you ring a bell, it just keeps ringing, 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 ringing. So it's not exactly a belief directly, but it's a resonance that carries through. You know, like if you ring a bell, it'll keep, you'll keep hearing that until you can't, until it's outside your sphere of hearing. So there might be a resonance that could be affecting you or blocking you in some way. And then any images. Let's say um, your family was real poor. 
and you had to move from place to place or your dad lost your job or maybe you're seven or eight years old or five years old and you remember the landlord coming to the door and saying, you haven't paid your rent in you know, two months and I want you people out of here by next week. And your father was crying, your mother was upset, your father maybe got in a fight or something like that. You've got an image, a stored memory in your mind, in your subconscious that says, wow, it's, it's going to be real scary or what if I can't pay my rent or they throw my family out or whatever. Those images need to be cleared. Or it could be something that was like you wanted to buy something and your folks said, no, nope, we can't afford that. Can't afford that. Or it's not. Or no, we don't. Our family doesn't do that. We don't get that. Or if you get this, then people are going to be jealous of you and they'll be um, thinking that you're a real smarty pants or something like that. So maybe it was that you had to hide any kind of abundance that you have. So check for things like images and resonances. Okay, now then, you've got your amounts already determined of your abundance, lack, and stagnant. So I want you to douse one more thing, and that's when we do feng shui and when we do a lot of different patterns, we always have one more thing which we call other. We don't even know what it is, but it's other. And so if there's something else that we haven't identified here, I haven't given you on the list, douse and see if there's some other thing that you will need to identify that's part of the blockage. Get some water. <coughs> And there might be two others or three others or several others. Okay, now you've got your percentages of what percentage is in abundance, lack, and stagnant. And so what you can begin to do now is to make changes with these things. You can identify if there's a belief or core belief. You can identify if there is a past life and begin to work on that. Now, some of you have skills to be able to do this. I've taught a variety of these classes and hope to continue to teach more and more. And some of you may not yet know how to do that. One of the things that you can do to help identify blocks is to work with dowsing charts. And there's a lot of different people that have charts out there. I'm gonna recommend one book to you that I like quite a lot. It's called, um, you can see it right here, The Pendulum Charts. There's volume one and volume two. And this is uh, a book that was designed by a friend of mine, uh, Dale Olson. And it has a lot of different kinds of charts. Everything from health to bought flower remedies to what's wrong with my car or how am I interfering with things and the rest of that. It's a great little book. It's laminated. It's like $21.00. And there are no limits to what you can do with this. It's a great book. There's also a level two, which is about $200, but it's for really serious practitioners. Now, Sandy, is that something that you sell or would they find that on Amazon? Where, where, where do you? Um... Yes, I sell that. And, um, and I, I'm, I've got several of them because I plan to come to Houston. So I might be able to make some of those available later on at the, before we close up. Because I really recommend it and work with charts because you'll discover things you never thought of before, especially in the other category. So work with that, thousand 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 charts. that is just being able to ask the right question, right? Absolutely. That's the key thing. And That's you can also right. ask your friends if you feel comfortable. It's like, what do you think? What, what do you see me talking about this way? Or what do I complain about or whine about? Or where do you see that I do really good? Or how's my energy change when I'm doing this versus that? Or are there interfering people around me that are blocking me? Or, you know, I had a I had a relationship one time and and it was kind of crazy. And my best friend came to me and said, Sandy, people are starting to question your credibility. And I said, Okay, I got it. Right now I'm gonna get this handled. And I did. Right, I mean, literally that day. When my friend said, because I was finding all these reasons and justifying all this rigmarole and making all these excuses. And when she said, people are starting to question your credibility, I was like, 
Okay, I'm gonna get this handled right now. So talk to your friends and find out what other people's perception about because sometimes the leopard doesn't even see his own spots and you might not be able to pick up what that is. Okay, now I know that you can't solve all these things immediately and some of you've got the skills to change a belief or clear some past lives or something like that. And so as you identify what these are, I want you to please uh, clear them if you can, and then go back and redouse on what percentage of your energy is in stagnant or lack or abundance. The lack and stagnant should go down, the abundance should go up. Of course, the goal is to have 100% in abundance. Then you're pretty much unlimited in whatever way that you could be. So I know that you can't necessarily get answers to all these things, especially if you're kind of new to this. So if you find that you've gotten stuck in a particular area, what I'm going to do is um, offer you a particular offering tonight. Now my sessions run on $150 for a session. My sessions run about an hour. Sometimes it can go up to an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, but that's my standard price. I've done a little better for my good friends in Houston, but my standard price is $150 for a session, which is actually a very good price considering what a lot of people charge for things. What I'm going to do today for people that are on the call or see this, see this seminar is that you can have a 30-minute session with me, which will give you plenty of time to clear an allergy, clear a past life, put a new belief in, or to pick one of these things that you want to do. You can have a 30-minute session with me for $26. Does that sound like a bargain? 30 minute session for $26, Sandy? Yes, yes. And you can do PayPal or put credit card or send me a check. Just don't send me any Alamoise or, you know, washing detergent or something like that or your firstborn son. $26 for a 30 minute session because I realized that you may not be able to have the skill to know clear how to clear that past life where you were none and you took that oath. And we can do that within 30 minutes. So this is something that I'm doing because I want to support dowsers because I love my dowsers and even the ones that I don't know yet, ones uh, in other parts of the country or the other world. So there'll be a limited time on this and a limited amount, but $26 and you get a, a 30 minute session with me, which is ridiculously ridiculous. Okay. Um, also, um, I want to invite you to consider getting this chart book, which is really good. It's $21. I can stick that in the mail. I've got some envelopes already. I can mail this to you. And this is a really excellent thing. And also, if you want to learn more about Dr. Nelson's emotion code work, which is one of the key things working with abundance and stuff, that's this book. You can get this book from me as well. You might get it other places, but you know, it would be supportive for me to be able to send this to you. And it will give you lots of information and instructions in here, how to clear it, as well as for health issues and even for working with children and animals and other things. I know some of you've worked with this and it's a, it's a really great program. And that book explains everything as well as having the chart in there. Um, also, my website is sandymac com and it's s-a-n-d-e-e-m-a-c dot com and you can see me doing some actual sessions there you can get a lot more information about the different tools i have in the toolkit and um certainly a lot more information so what i'd like to do right now if if you want me to do that is to cheer, clear everybody's allergy to gold would that be something that would be useful i hope i think it is i think that would be great Okay, so I want everybody to get a little tiny scrap of paper, just a little bitty piece of paper about the size of a, about the size of a postage stamp, just right. a little scrap of paper, about this big, just some little thing like that. And I want you to write on that paper, gold, G-O-L-D, just write the word gold, okay? Even if you don't have an allergy to do this, this is a great, this is a great little thing to do. Now, remember, this is not you that has the allergy. This is your body that has the allergy to gold or cash or whatever this is. And the part of your body that's in charge of that is what we call the primal brain. That's right back here. It's, you're also known as your reptilian brain. 
This is the part of you that is only interested, only interested in your physical survival. It doesn't care how much money you have in your bank account. It doesn't care about your spiritual purpose. It doesn't care about if you're a good person or a bad person. It doesn't care about anything. This is the part that is in charge of fears and phobias and an allergy is like a phobia. So for example, let's say you got caught in an elevator one time for an hour or two. The next time you go to an elevator, knowing that probably you will never get caught again. The next time you go up to an elevator, your unconscious or your subconscious goes, ah, I ain't going in that thing. I'm going to climb those 17 flights of stairs, but you're not going to get me back in one of those elevators. Uh-uh. So that's the part of your body, that reptilian brain, that is only concerned about primal, primal survival. And it doesn't care about anything else. <clears throat> so that's the part that remembers perhaps where there was a misuse of gold or money or something. So you've written gold on your little piece of paper. I want you to take that piece of paper, put it in your non-dominant hand, your non-dominant hand. Put that piece of paper right back here at the back of your neck and just hold on to that. Then I want you to take your thumb and your middle finger, not your first finger, your middle finger, your little birdie finger, okay? I want you to put that on either side of the bridge of your nose. And I want you to put your first finger on your third eye, right there in the center of your forehead. Okay? So you got your position now. And I want you to close your eyes and everybody do this out loud. Repeat after me. My precious body. My precious body. Thank you for protecting me from gold. Thank you for protecting me from gold. For all these years. For all these years. Because of you. Because of you. I'm safe and I have survived. And I have survived. And I am so very grateful. And I'm so very grateful. However, my precious body. However, my precious body. I now have new learnings and new understandings. I now have new learnings and new understandings. And I have come to know. And I have come to know. That gold can be a really good thing. That gold can be a really good thing. It can help keep us safe and survive. It can help keep us safe and survive. It can help us be strong and healthy. It can help us be strong and healthy. It can help us accomplish our goals and desires. It can help us accomplish our goals and desires. And so my precious body. And so my precious body. From this day forward. From this day forward. You and I can be in alignment. You and I can be in alignment. With gold in any form. With gold in any form. It could be in the form of cash. It can be in the form of cash. It can be in the form of jewelry. It can be in the form of jewelry. It can be in the form of savings. It can be in the form of savings. Investings. Investments. Any kind of wealth or abundance. Any kind of wealth or abundance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, that's it. Now, if you had doused before, does my body have an allergy to gold? You would have probably gotten yes. If you doused now, you would probably get no. It's in alignment with gold. Great. And you may have actually felt some shift or some movement in your energy field. Some people feel a little bit dizzy or they just feel like something is shifting around or recalibrating. So all of a sudden it's like, it's in alignment with gold. Gold is okay. Gold is a good thing. Yeah. And who knows? Who knows? But be open to possibilities. Okay. I had a gal in one of my classes a couple years ago. She had an allergy to giving. She didn't really have a problem with having money. I think she was a fairly successful person, but she had an allergy to giving. After she shifted this allergy, she opened the back of her notebook, which she had no recollection of how in the world this happened. There were seven $100 bills that were in that notebook. Some of you were there when you saw that. She says, I have no idea where this came from. I don't know how this happened. 
And she immediately turned around and gave some of those $100 bills away to other people in the class. So she got over her giving problem real quickly. Mary, you remember that, don't you? I, I was on the receiving end of that. <laughs> oh, you were on the receiving end. So you have no problem receiving. Okay. Right. <laughs> Great. Okay. So that's just one of the tools in the toolkit. And you see, that didn't take very long at all to fix that pattern and that problem. And I, and I really bless you with now being able to um, have gold in your life and not have any problems with it. But if you find, like I said, that you've got some past life, some oaths, a curse, um, some trapped emotions or any number of other things, I invite you to take advantage of my uh, ridiculous offer right now because I really do want to support you, but I want to have an honest uh, energy exchange because otherwise it is disrespectful to you if I just give everything away and there's no energy exchange back. That's one of the principles of manifesting as well. So my email is... We have it in the, in the chat. You have it in the, in the chat? Okay. Good. SandyMac100 at gmail.com and it'll be on the thing. Okay, Mary, I think you and Emily are going to open it up for any questions, if there might be some. Yeah. Do we have any questions um, for Sandy? Um, it can be about our dowsing for abundance or if you have other dowsing questions for Sandy. Um, uh, I think you and I were talking earlier, Sandy, about... Um, you know, not only the things from the past, right, that from our parents or family or ancestors, but um, with all the events that have been occurring this year, um, you know, I think that that has, I don't know, affected a lot of us, or at least, you know, um, um, or the had adverse ad, adverse influence on, on yeah our yeah and ad, yeah. right I mean I think everybody every single person has a concern about the economy you know right, um, and right. It's happening and you and, could do yeah. some you could do some dowsing about that or how that affects you maybe you need to find some additional sources of money maybe you need to find some other ways of generating money um, for example um, I've just Really, I know it's been around a long time ago, but I just got introduced to Craigslist. And people are selling, I mean, everything from kids' blue jeans to what I need to buy right now is a couple of burn barrels. And I called Ace Hardware, and they want like 80 bucks a piece. But I found somebody on Craigslist that's got burn barrels for $22. Well, I need a new burn barrel because I live out in the country on a ranch up here in northern Arizona. And I need some new burn barrels, and that sounds great. So maybe there's stuff that you need to list on on a Craigslist and get rid of some stuff or put out that you want to do stuff. Maybe there's some things that you could do with your dowsing, douse certain things for people or some questions. There's a site called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R, which started out originally with people doing things for $5. It's an international um, site and now a lot of the prices are higher than $5. But if you've got a skill or ability, I mean, they have things like, um, I'll design a jingle for your birthday to send to all your friends or something for $5. Or I'll put some positive things on your Facebook for $5. Or I'll come up with a new idea about how to present this. Or I'll edit a video. So you may have a, a skill in something that you never thought of before that has anything to do with your current job or what you used to do. And you could turn that into something on Fiverr. Just get on there and look at all that stuff. I mean, it is amazing. That's an additional way to make money from home without having to get out and travel around or something like that. Okay, so um, so I guess people can dial that to say, am I open to receiving other forms of abundance? Um, Absolutely, so great other, idea of, from in, other sources. In, Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, of course, people always want to know how do I win the lottery, but I wouldn't just sit back and plan on that. But you have to buy a ticket if you want to win. So maybe you need to do that or enter some kind of little contest or something like that. There's a lots and lots of ways uh, to create abundance. Maybe it's not just making money. Maybe it's bartering. For example, I have a well here, and a lot of people in this area don't have wells because. We're in the, what we call the high desert, arid desert. And a well can cost fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 because you have to go very deep. And I happen to have very good water. 
but I have neighbors that don't have well water and they have to what they call haul water. So these, these big hundred gallon containers and I, and I give my neighbors water. Well, I have one neighbor I'm, um, I'm real grateful for and he comes and brings his truck and he fills this thing up with water, but then he'll fix any kind of little technical thing that I need to do around. He'll lift some heavy boxes, he'll install a security light, he'll spend you know, 15, 20 minutes doing some little honeydew chores for me, kind of a barter type thing, so that I'm not charging him for water, but he's still having an energy exchange. So be open to other ways of generating abundance that maybe you weren't open to before. Are there any questions or have we covered everything thoroughly? Um, I am not seeing anybody. I mean, a lot of people are asking about your offer. Um, uh, the, someone said on your website that the, the cart only shows um, $85 for half an offer, um, half an hour. So um, do we need yeah, to email you? No, don't go through the website. I want you to call me. Call me. E or you could email me or text me, but uh, call me email is going to be the best thing. Otherwise, you'll go, we got to override what that's in there. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Um, call me. My number is 505-577-5775. Don't call me right now. Wait a little bit. <laughs> so the phone's not ringing. <laughs> call me tomorrow. <laughs> or uh, send me a text or an email. And if you don't hear back from me within a couple of days, then uh, maybe it went into spam or something. Whoops, there's somebody already there texting. We have, um, uh, Willow says, hi Sandy, my dowsing chain with my yin yang rock broke. Any metaphysical ideas why? Um, Maybe it needed to be cleared. I don't know, but check to see, use something else, a necklace or something. See if it needed to be cleared. See if uh, you needed a new uh, dowsing instrument or um, maybe there was some interference or maybe it was just used to fall, it used to, it was just ready to go on to the next level or something. I don't know. Boy, I had one pendulum once that just like, Okay. Broke Blue apart. Blue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I tend to use a heavy pendulum and I actually like one with a, a pretty heavy duty chain because I'm, I douse real, uh, kind of rough. <laughs> Any other questions? It's about dowsing. Um, Glad Willow. Willow's from up here. So she's been to some of my dowsing classes and she's actually a long time dowser herself, but glad she was able to get that message. Yeah, I bet I bet Sandy has a a um, uh, a, a pendulum that she could um, hook you up with. I think you have a beautiful collection of stuff. Okay, um, Conception is asking, what is a covenant? So, would you like to explain? What oh, it yeah, Connie, a, a covenant is an agreement. Uh, it's a little bit different than a than a contract. But a covenant is something that includes a spiritual component. Like they'll say, okay, somebody made a covenant with God or something like that. And it'll talk about a, God made a covenant with the people. Uh, I remember a story that there was a covenant made with rainbows that they would, that God would never, this is true or not, that God would never again destroy the earth by flooding like it did in Noah's time. So that's a covenant is something that has a spiritual component or religious component to it versus just a regular oath or contract. Okay, thank but you. you can Google it and get the exact uh, definition on it. But if it says, oops, screen recording, something happened here. Um, oop. Okay, we are oop. Mike Merrick. We do not want to see sharing your screen. Mary's there. Stop share. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I don't either. Hey, Mike, you're sharing your screen publicly. Right? Yeah. Oops, there's another call, another thing coming in, but that's okay. Okay. Now I don't see anybody. I just see a thing that says United States and it lists a lot of numbers. Yeah, there. we're looking at Mike Merrick's screen. So, Mike, um, I don't know why we're looking at your screen. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Does um, anybody, any other questions that we can answer at this time? 
see. Um, or if there's any other questions, you, you or Emily, or anybody has, or genius here. Um, I think we need to to ask. Um, G. Sandy, would we? Or anything else you want to talk about Lone Star Dowsers or your meetings or anything like that? You might get that information. Well, we are typically, well, it's been a different kind of a year, but we're trying to meet on the third Wednesday of each month. Um, and when we meet in person, it's at the Trini Minden Hall. Um, but we're going to record them all uh, via Zoom so you can see them now or and or enjoy them later so well they could get in touch with you or Emily or someone and be put on the mailing list the email list for notifications of Lone Star Dowsers even if it's somebody like Willow that's up here in northern Arizona she could come to your meetings right right so um if you want to put your email in the chat we can get that or um whoever sent you the link um to this uh you can respond to that yeah that yeah make sure you're on the, the the dowsers okay well there's some fun things i know we can be dowsing for sandy um uh do we want to even do, do well we, one do of the things you could douse for is you could douse things about the virus you know is it one, I mean, one of the things that I doubt, which I'm not attached to the answer, is that there was more than one strain of that virus. There were maybe six or seven strains. And I'm, and I'm a little suspicious that it all just came from another person because just north of me, less than 40 miles, is the Navajo Indian Reservation. I'm, I'm between four Indian reservations here. And at one point, there was uh, on the national news statement saying that the Navajo Reservation had the highest amount of incidents of anywhere in the country. Now, these people don't necessarily all live right next to each other. Some of them live several miles apart. And it's a very poor reservation, so a lot of them don't have running water, electricity, or other things. I suspect that maybe some of this stuff possibly came in with chemtrails or some other ways or something. But they had a very high incidence of COVID-19, or whatever it is, and they... Um, they went into very severe lockdown. They couldn't leave their house between eight and five, and, and they were only could, could leave the reservations like two days a week to come into town to get groceries and stuff. So I was like, what's up with this? And then when I look up and I'd see a lot of chemtrails just north of me here. So those are things that people could douse on in your particular area. You could do some dowsing about 5G, which is another serious threat to uh, our health and well-being. Um, I know that they've introduced it to some extent in Houston. I don't think it's up to full scale. I don't know if it's in all areas, and I don't know if it's in your particular area and how much of it's been activated. So you could douse about those things. You could douse about things like the weather. You know, this is supposed to be a big hurricane season. Are there any hurricanes coming in? You know, where is it likely to hit? And you could douse about fun and good things as well. Good things coming your way. What's the next blessing coming my way? Or Do whatever. We, there's a couple of storms that um, might be heading into the Gulf um, over the next week. Uh, do we want to douse about that? Do we you could douse about that? I suggest people individually douse and find out a couple things because this will help their dowsing. Douse, where is it likely to make landfall? Like, I guess the last one came down near Corpus or something. Um, where is it likely to make landfall? And what is the maximum number of wind, miles per hour of the winds that are going to be registered with that one? That would be, um, that would be an interesting thing to douse. Write that down and then you can, you can check with it later. And it could be, a, it, it doesn't have to be a, just a hurricane in your area. I mean, the people up where I live here could douse on, if there's a, say there's a hurricane that's gonna hit Florida or Texas or something. I just saw in the weather tonight, there's something coming up to us from the Baja Peninsula. And we hope to get some rain from that hurricane. That's our tropical storm that's coming because we're very, very low on water up here. Um, so, and you can douse some fun things as well really, you know, really fun, really exciting things. Douse things about your garden, douse things about uh, your work, douse things about clients, douse things about- Wait a minute. You've been living in the country alone too long if 
if the fun thing, the first thing you get said was garden. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> why not? You know, we've been looking for things that I'll put in the garden that will keep the bugs out. You know, we found out Irish spring soap helps keep out mice and other rodents out of the garden in the greenhouse. I know it's crazy. Irish spring soap, something about it. But I bought about 10 bars and stashed them back at the, from the Dollar Tree store. Oh, that's funny. That's hey, funny. Sandy, this is Carol. Um, can you yes. talk a little bit about um, just the types of questions to ask with dowsing? Because that's my downfall is really zeroing in on asking a, um, a specific question. Can you talk about that a little bit? Okay, yes. For some people, that's a very good question, Carol. For some people, they can ask a general question. For some, and you need to figure this out for yourself. For some people, you need to ask a very precise question. So some people, I would say this is generally not a good question, but it works for some people like, is this vitamin good for me? That's a whole lot different question than will, will um, a thousand milligrams, this tablet of a thousand milligrams of vitamin C be beneficial to my health at this time? So de determine whether you can ask a more general question or a more precise question. And err on the side of precise. You know, how many do I need to take a day? Uh, do I need to take it 5,000 5, milligrams? Do I need to take them all at once? Do I need to take some at breakfast, lunch, or dinner before bed? Or something, is it this brand? Is it this brand? Should I take it in powder form? Should I take it in capsules? Should I take it in tablet form? Can I just drink a gallon of orange juice or whatever like that? So the more precise question, the better it can be. And the other thing, Carol, is Anytime a question could be misunderstood, assume that it might be. It seems like the universe has a sense of humor <laughs> and they will um, sometimes interpret things in a different way. So the more precise that you can be, the better it will be and the more it could be misunderstood could be. Also, um, when you're first learning to douse, if you'll write the question down, and be very clear about your wording, that's better. And for those of you that have taken my dowsing class, where I have about 40 handouts in there, one of, the, one of the handouts is asking how to ask the right question or how to ask a precise question. So um, that's something to take a look at. And then if you're dowsing with another person, um, so if there's a big, if you've got a big issue like, should I divorce my husband or, they said, I've got cancer. Do I really have cancer? Or should I have chemotherapy or have some cut off or some? God knows I'm not saying this to anybody that's listening, but some people might do that. You might want to get another dowser to help you with that. Might get them to douse with you and um, make sure that you both are asking the same question very precisely and you understand what it is. So those are all things I know that can be helpful to ask a uh, good question. I hope that's helpful. Sandy, would you... Um explain to people what blind dowsing is? Yes, that's a, that's a good question, Mary. Blind dowsing is when you douse and you don't know uh, what the question is. So it can be done several ways. You could write, uh, let's say you've got three job offers or five job offers and you wanna know which one would be in your best interest or you'd be happiest with or you're likely to get an offer from or something like that. Write it on the same kind of little piece of paper, about the same size, like say a little post-it note, fold it up, write each one of them down, mix them all up, and then douse over those pieces of paper, which one of these is accurate. Another thing that you could do is, and I have a lot of people that do this with me, is they will call me up and say, okay, would you douse on this for me? And, um, I'm, and that I'm, because they don't want me to have a personal opinion or investment in it, um, uh, they'll ask me to do what we call a blind douse. Like, should I move here? Or should I buy a house here? Or something like that. And um, so they'll formulate the question in their mind. And it needs to be really clear that it could be asked in a yes, no format or on a percentage basis. And so I'll say, okay, when you get the question very clearly in your mind, let me know. And then I will douse for them connecting my high self with their high self, I will douse and say, to what degree 
is the answer to the question that Mary has in mind or Carol has in mind or Louise has in mind, to what degree is the answer to the question that they have in mind yes or no or a percentage of yes or no? And then I'll just say, okay, I'm getting a yes on this or I'm getting a no on that. And they'll go, okay. And they may tell me, oh, I wanted to know, should I buy this house or should I do this? Or they might not even tell me, you know, they might not even tell me at all. It doesn't matter, but I'm doing, I'm connecting like my high consciousness to their high self with creator and then get the answer to what's the best one. It takes a little bit of practice to do this blind dowsing. The person has to be very clear and precise in their mind and not be all over the map with asking a lot of stuff. Have one question at a time, but that's one of the ways of doing blind dowsing versus putting it on a piece of paper and dowsing over it. And it's real helpful, especially if there's something where there's a huge emotional investment in it, or you want it to be a particular way, I want it to say yes, I want it to say yes, well, then you're interfering, you're interfering with your dowsing. It's a good way to bypass all of that. Okay, any other questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, or anything like that I can help you with? Um, Judy says that soap will also keep deer out of things. <laughs> what? Ivory soap will also keep deers out of things. That's from Oh, Jesus. okay. Irish spring soap will keep deer out of things. Okay, good. Ivory, yeah. Ivory. Okay, was there another question? Oh, uh, yeah, a comment. Uh, a few minutes ago when you did the querying, um, the allergy to go querying with the piece yes. of paper, you know, the back of my neck where we replaced that, it, 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 got, it became very hot. <laughs> and it's okay. kind of warm and burning a little bit. Are you already a dowser? Yeah, I'm not a, okay. yeah. Dowse and, see, dowse and see if that has been cleared. If okay. that allergy to gold has been cleared, yes or no. Uh -huh. I think it has, and what you may be having, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. What Lorraine. you may be, Lorraine. What you may be having, Lorraine, is just, it's like shifting the wiring inside your brain, sort of. Uh -huh. That's not really what's going on, but it's sort of, that's a way to think about it in a mechanical point of way. Ask if that's what it's doing. Dows and see if, if it's recalibrating or redefining about your relationship with gold. Okay. Do that right now. Just ask if that's correct. Okay. And you'll know if that's what was going on. Can you get, a, can you get an answer there? Uh, so far, it's a no. Okay, is it something else about gold that your body might have an allergy to? Ask if that's correct. See if it's something else about gold. No. Or see if it see if it wants you to do it over again. Maybe it wants it yes. to go in. Okay, that's what it is. So you see how we just took it and kind of asked questions around. So it wants you to just do that allergy cure over. Uh, okay, how to, uh, I don't know if I remember okay. exactly. You'll find your little paper. I have the okay. paper. Okay. Okay, good question. Thank you. Okay. Any I'll other questions? Give you the steps though again to how. how... Okay, um, call me on my phone because it'll take me a few minutes to teach you how to do that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Later on after we're done. Any other questions or anything else? Mary or Carol or Emily or anybody else that's monitoring? Just the microphone. Um, I am not seeing anything in the chat, um, but I think somebody's unmuted themselves. Do we have another question from anybody? Hey, it's Susie. I I'm so happy to be on this call, Sandy. I've never met you. I used to be in Houston and I've been secretly admiring you <laughs> from a distance and I'm so happy to be on this call. So that's it. I'm just tickled. And I'm complete. Okay. I hope you got something useful from this. <laughs> Absolutely. It was great. Thank you. All right. Good. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate connecting with you. Awesome. I have a question for you. Tell us about what you're wearing. Um, I just see this magnificent... I don't know, I guess it, is it an amethyst? What is that? It's an amethyst, yeah. And it's, um, it's actually got a, it's got a little secret compartment in it here that you could probably put something in it. Um, I'll show you. I got it at a, 
at a gem thing one time and you can actually, I don't know if I can do it or not. It actually has a little latch here. You might be able to see that. And you can open this up and stash something inside there. I'm not, not being able to get it. I don't want anything getting stashed in there. Oh, I got it the wrong way. Yeah, you can open it up. You see it has a little compartment in there. Yeah. You can probably carry a, a Valium, <laughs> a Valium pill in there, or you can carry, you can actually carry a tiny, tiny, tiny pendulum in there, or um, a small piece of chocolate or an M&M or something like that. You or can you carry. could put some kind of a little blessing in there. You could put a blessing in there or something like um, now, when you like found that. that, did you douse over it? You know, was oh, there yes. I douse over because I also deal sometimes in gems and jewelry and stuff. I always douse before I buy anything that it's appropriate for me to have it and for who, you know, the group of people that I'm getting it for. Yeah. And and I, I douse over it and I clear them and everything like that. This is a piece I've had for a long time. I'd love to get some more of them, but um, I'm not sure where to get it anymore. I can't remember. Okay, so you douse over it. Is it appropriate for you to have it? And then yeah. when I used to have a lot of stuff, when I had a business around this, I would douse. Is this appropriate for me to have for myself, uh, to sell, or to keep? And for keeping, it meant that I needed to sell it at some other time. Maybe I needed to gift somebody with that or some other reason. So there would be several questions that I would ask. I, we literally had charts, the gal that worked with me. We had a chart to keep it, to sell it, to um, whatever, whatever it was. And do you, you have the school of thought that um, crystals need to be cleared? Uh, yes, because it, uh, they've often gone through a variety of different hands before they get to you, unless you went to Al Arkansas or Brazil and dug up your own. So sometimes they were involved in explosions and it was upsetting to them. People don't realize that rocks and minerals, everything on the planet has consciousness. I mean, they could get that a dog does and a plant, maybe a rock. They don't think that your laptop has a consciousness or your shoes, but it does. Everything has consciousness. So um, yes, because it may have been exposed to some greed or a trauma or something along its path and journey to get from wherever it was to you. So you can clear it and then you can put a new program in there as well. You can use your pendulum with all that. Yeah. So another, another way that you can do dowsing. Work with, work with your dowsing. Yeah. That it can only be used to the highest and best good for you or anybody else that it can't be misused against you because people that know about things like that can do those kinds of things and a and a and a crystal or a stone has a consciousness but it's very non-emotional so if it were programmed to to do bad things or do harm it could be done that way but if you'll if you'll put a program in there that it can't be misused then that's very helpful fill it with light divine light or whatever and you can douse the crystal and ask what does it want to be used for is it for healing is it for protection is it for manifestation? Uh, maybe it wants to be put in the garden or the greenhouse. Maybe it wants to be used in a, uh, it sh when I teach shamanic things, I'll teach, um, I look for crystals that are for extraction crystals. So we can extract things, um, embedded objects and old negativity and stuff out of people with certain kinds of crystals that are very glad to be used in that particular way. And then you clear them afterwards. Okay. Any other questions or is this it? Possibilities are endless. Um, okay, um, does anyone else have any questions? I think Mindy has a question. Mindy, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, hi, Cena. <laughs> hi, Mindy. I hear you up in Arkansas digging crystals. I was, and I have them all in my trunk because um, I can't bring them out yet, but I was going to put them all along the garden, you know, in the back and maybe some in the front, but um, I was, um, I just doused, well, I just checked and evidently, you know, the big ones that I brought back, I was going to cut open and see if they sparkled, which I'm sure they will, but um, the ones well, I've- so It sounds like, it sounds like when you say cut them open, it sounds like you got a geode versus a quartz crystal. Well, I got everything. I got a bunch oh, of okay. so got a I bunch mean big ones. I was gonna open up and set them on the ground, you know, and so the the my garden would sparkle a little bit. 
But anyway, when, when I get it cleaned out, it's full of weeds right now. Um, what are some of the things, because I didn't even think that, because um, I bought some crystals too, and um, from, you know, uh, people, and yeah. uh, what kinds of things would, would I ask each crystal, so to say? Um, you said- Well, you can ask if it's male or female energy. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you could ask that Whoops. Um, if it's got male or female energy. Does okay. it have a particular purpose that it wants to be used for? I got see. that. I got that. And one. then and then go down a list of things that it could be. Does well, it want to be used? Does it want to be used now, or does it want to be kept for later? Does it need to be? Does it need some additional clearing? Okay, um, I got that. It, some of them need some clearing. Okay, so you can see. Does it need to be put in salt? Does uh -huh. you you could you could they'd say put it in a running stream. You could clear it with your pendulum, perhaps. Find out how it wants to be used. Okay. You can use fire. I don't know if you came to the class on embedded objects, but I taught you how to use it. fire to clear with your breath and fire, or um, um, with like Palo Santo or Agua de Florida, Florida water. You can clear with Florida water a lot. So those are all ways. Okay. Clear, if they want to be cleared. And then find out what they want to be used for. Do they want to be used for healing? Do they want to just sit around and look gorgeous? Do they want to <laughs> do they want to be worked with protection? Do they want to be does it maybe they need to be gifted to somebody? There's any number of questions you can ask. Is that well, helpful? I was asking you to give me some ideas. So you you're doing that just well. <laughs> okay. Protect for gifting. That's that's great. Um, use healing and even even with yeah. healing you could go down never is it like healing emotion is it healing trauma is it healing neurological stuff is it for pulling stuff out is it for putting stuff in wow so there's lots of different um, lots of different ways it could be used wow stuff in or taking it out yeah thank you yeah, or before. anything. I mean, it's limited. Maybe, maybe you just need to stabilize something. Maybe somebody's blood pressure is getting weird or something. And could this, could this crystal or would this crystal be able to help stabilize someone's blood pressure? For example, I don't know, but you could ask it. Sure. Oh, that's just awesome. Thank you. I, you um, yeah, when I bring them, when I'm ready to bring them out and start doing that, I'll check each one. and. Yeah, that's great. Make yourself a little chart, Mindy. Just okay. make yourself like a little chart and that chart book, I don't know if you've got it, but it's got some blank ones at the end or in your handouts, you've got some blank charts that you can okay. write anything in. And so write some of those things in and then you just sit there and douse each one. What does it want? What does it want to do? Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Love it. That's very helpful. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question for Sandy? My, my alarm just went off that our time is supposed to be up. I don't know if it is or not. Okay. Um, I am not seeing any um, questions in the chat. Um, we're gonna add a few people to the email list. Um, nobody is raising any hands, I guess. Uh, I guess if no one has any other questions, so I'll just say thank you so much, Sandy. This has been really, really helpful. So appreciate it. Right. Great. Right. 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 Dabbing for abundance and more. <laughs> and more, yeah. Just be careful what you're asking for. Yes. Just remember the universe has a sense of, a sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, I mean, it's, we'll send it out with the recording. Everybody's got it. Um, and um, Sandy has a special. You can email her or call her for her half hour um, special for the Lone Star Dowsers. And you need to do it within 30 days. Um, she has a 30 day time limit. So if today is August 19th by September 19th, um, is that, that correct? Sounds fair. That sounds fair, doesn't it? I mean, is this reasonable? Ridiculously reasonable. Yes, you got you got to get scheduled during that time. How about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, 
Thank uh, you very much. I can do it. Some, very enjoyable I can do it. Indeed. Oh, I see. I see you there. Yes. Yes. Good. Good to see you. Good, Good to, to see you too after such a long time. Yes. Thank you so much. Hope you, we have to doubt that you come to Houston soon. Well, we, we've we talked about that. Thank you so much. But we uh, find that a lot of people are afraid to get together for classes to meet True. because of the government True. lockdown and all that. So that's why we did the best we could with this. But I hope to come maybe in the, if things settle down soon, uh, otherwise maybe after the first part of the year, if things settle down a little bit, I'll come. Because I've got a lot sure, more Ma things I want to teach you. Yeah. Miss Money would keep us in contact for sure. Yes, yes, Carol will do that. Good. Thank you for your good work. Thank I you. appreciate it. Nice. Yeah. Good. Well, Sandy, you have a very big fan club here in Houston. We love you. <laughs> so. Um. Okay. Thank you. Thank Carol. Thank, um, thank Emily. You. Thank you, Mary, and all the people that have gone on here. I really appreciate it, and um, I look forward to hearing from you. And practice your dowsing. Practice of all the times in the world that you need to be dowsing. It's right now with all this craziness and lies and deception and BS and misinformation and fairy tales and other kind of crazy stuff coming in from everywhere, including off planet, satellites, the moon. Um, I mean, just be open to stuff coming in from anywhere and just dials on all that. So the so if we wanted to check the accuracy of a statement, um, maybe something on the news or whatever. Yep. We Set a little chart up and douse the percentage. To what do, what's the percentage of truth in this? Okay. And then maybe maybe you, if it's a statement, you might even have to go to each word. Okay. So okay. Um, let's say President Trump has agreed to um, uh, cease and desist all chemtrails. So you get that part of it is true, but part of it's not. But when you when you get to the word agreed, it goes, no, that's not true. He hasn't agreed to do that. You see, so, so there could be any, it could be in the statement itself that there's a percentage of truth or distortion. Ah. Or so you can be, you can be very, very, very precise. I mean, you, you, with health things, you can be as much or more precise, literally, than any million dollar machine they have down at Texas Medical Center. You can douse, you can douse beyond your cells. You can douse beyond your DNA. You can douse down to your frequency and your essence. And they don't have machines that can do that. Okay. 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 So, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, you're just Thank a wealth you. of knowledge. We, you're a treasure. And we appreciate you so much, Sandy. So thank you so much for, for doing it. And the technology angels were with us. We appreciate that. So, yes. all right. Thank you. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you, Mary. Good night. Good night. God bless. See you all next month. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Sandy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thank Bye. you. Welcome. Thank you. I don't even know how to cut it. It was really good to see you, Sandy.